Hello, and welcome to this Time Zero Navigator version 4 tutorial. Today, I'm on board my boat to demonstrate how to connect your computer to the common navigation instruments found on board. The first thing that we're going to do is take a look at the Device Manager by right clicking on the Windows Start menu and going to Device Manager to verify that the USB connections I'm connecting from my NMEA 2000 network and my AIS unit are working properly and the drivers are installed. So we can go down here to where it says ports and left click you'll see my ActiSense NGT1 with COM port 3 as well as my C-Link RS-232 to USB adapter and this is going to convert um, and allow me to connect my AIS unit which is an older um, NMEA0183 AIS unit. So the next thing we're going to do, because I know I'm also connecting a Fruno radar, is to set our IP address for the computer. You can skip this step if you're not connecting any Fruno radars or sounders. Right click on the network icon in the taskbar, open network and internet settings, select Ethernet, change adapter options, and then right click on the Ethernet icon and select properties and then select Internet Protocol version 4 and select properties again and we're going to manually input the IP address for the Fruno network and for this example we're going to use 172.31.3.150 and it's important to make sure the subnet mask is correct which is 255.255.0.0 it should auto fill that in for you, if not manually enter that. If you have a second computer that's connected to the network, you'll just need to increment by one, so the next computer would say be 151 instead of 150. Hit OK and close, and then go ahead and start Time Zero Navigator. Select Navigation, when the software launches for the first time, the connection wizard will automatically open. And so for this we're going to use the automatic port configuration and we're going to have Time Zero search automatically for the COM ports and the NMEA 2000 devices. All right. So the software is finished analyzing the system and it's showing me that on COM port 4, which is my USB to serial connection for my AIS unit, it's detected that we have position, course over ground, speed over ground, as well as AIS. So I'm going to go ahead and nickname this. It's especially useful if you have multiple COM ports with different information. And then we'll take a look at the NMEA 2000 connection, which has position, date time, course over ground, heading, uh, depth, wind angle, pressure, etc. <clears throat> I also have a couple of fuel tanks connected to the system. It's important with NMEA 2000 that if you have multiple devices with the same information, so in my case I have a satellite compass and a GPS sensor, that the instances are set correctly. Uh, if you're unsure how to do this, you can consult your device manufacturer or ActiSense NMEA reader allows you to set instances as well. We're going to select Next, and this gives us an opportunity to check um, which device will be used as our master and which will be our backup. Since we have position and course over ground coming from both the NMEA 2000 system as well as the AIS unit, I'm going to make sure that we're getting those from the NMEA 2000 network as the GPS and satellite compass that I have are more accurate than the GPS receiver on the AIS. Also in areas of high AIS traffic you may see a delay in the position sentence from your AIS unit. AIS is not selected because there's only one uh, option for um, how they're getting AIS. I'm also going to select NMEA 2000 Autopilot Output, as I know there is a Furno Autopilot connected to my system. And select Finish. 
And now you'll see that it's found the radar that I have connected, and you'll see AIS targets. If I switch to navigation mode, and I select center on target, and zoom in, you can see my position as well as the other AIS targets. I know that I have heading because I'm facing the correct direction in the slip. I get a uh, satellite accuracy and a GPS status. I uh, do not get the number of satellites in use as that is a NMEA 0183 sentence and not something that comes across with NMEA 2000. And you'll see that I have course over ground, speed over ground, and as we discussed in the navigation data video, I can go ahead and add the rest of those sentences. So we'll click on the three dots. We're going to add, say, another um, parent wind angle gauge. So now I have a wind angle. And maybe I will add a depth. It's always a good one to have. I can make this a little bit smaller to uh, allow for more information. I could remove that if I wanted to or change it to maybe heading. Or wind speed. Or barometric pressure. So these are all sentences that I know that I have present on the network, so I can enable them in that way. Now that I have an AIS connected, I can also go ahead and look at our AIS list. And I can increase the number of targets I wanted. I can uh, sort by speed instead of by distance or by name. And there you have it. Now we'll take a quick look at the radar connection since that's up and running. So this is the Furno DRS 4D NXT radar. And that name shows up there. And I can either click the transmit button here or just click on standby. And now I will see my radar. couple of things since I'm connected to this radar. Um, this is one of the Furuno solid state Doppler radars, which gives me the ability to work in target analyzer mode. So if I click on target analyzer, you'll see that the echo turns green and anything moving towards me at greater than two knots would turn red. If I was underway, you would see those two targets just off my port bow turn red. I can also acquire them manually by right clicking and selecting acquire target. The flashing red indicates that it's close for my CPA or closest point of approach alarm, but since I'm tied to the dock, I'm not really worried about that. That's all for now. We're going to run the connection wizard one more time with a Fruno MFD turned on so we can look at what data comes across that way as well as the Fruno sounder. All right, we're back. I've got my MFD powered up and turned on and now we're going to take a look at running the connection wizard while connected to a Fruno MFD network. So I'm going to check the automatic port configuration. We're going to have time zero go ahead and Search for connections here. Okay, the connection wizard's finished running, and you'll see there's a few other options here now that we have an MFD on the network. COM port 4 is still my AIS, so I'm going to go ahead and nickname that AIS. The next option is Navnet NMEA, and you'll see that's everything that's coming over the Furuno Ethernet network. So it's actually rebroadcasting AIS for me. Uh, we now have speed or uh, sea surface temperature, 
if the boat was running, I would actually have a speed through the water sentence, which I don't have because the installation is quite new. And so I actually have to take the boat off the dock to get that to work. Uh, heading, uh, enemy A2000 information, similar to what was there before. Uh, if I wanted, I could go into the Furuno MFD and actually output sea surface temperature onto the network, which is a, a sentence I don't have normally. You'll see that AIS is now also on the enemy A2000 network. <coughs> and ARPA, and we're getting that from the uh, uh, Furuno radar. Before, uh, if it was just a standalone connection, the software would actually be doing the ARPA processing itself. Select next, and you'll see the option for uh, outputting heading onto the network is gone. Um, we don't give you that option if you're connected to a Furno MFD network. But I still want the option to output uh, NMEA 2000 autopilot. Again, we're going to check and see what our master is. Um, in this case, I have now have three different sources for GPS because I have a GPS with the AIS unit, the satellite compass, and also the internal GPS in the TZ Touch 2. So I'm going to go ahead and select Enemy A2000. And same thing with uh, Enemy A2000 for um, course over ground, speed over ground. It's really up to you whether you leave the Navnet network as the primary or as the secondary on this. Um, one thing to be sure is that uh, in this situation, I like having the um, uh, knowing that the same position sources are going to be consistent between the MFD and the um, software. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And now I should have data here again in my data bar. And you'll notice that I now have the option for a sounder screen. Uh, both the radar and sounder uh, workspaces are only present if they're connected um, and configured with a sounder. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, any of the adjustments for the sounder in terms of transducer options, things like that, should be done on the MFD in this case because I'm actually using the internal sounder on the Furuno Time Zero Touch 2. If I was connected to a black box sounder, I would have options for transducer setup and things like that. Um, for the radar, uh, the same thing. Uh, since it's a standalone radar, I can go in and I can actually um, do bearing alignment or uh, sector blanking if need be all through the software itself. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for our other videos.